What a start to the week. Yep, it's the market sniper. Hit that like button. We're here to bring you in the middle of the night. Yes, the best information about your trading in the traditional finance world. And you are seeing so many interesting things in this video. We are going to talk about the $12 gap on WTI from Friday to the Sunday night stroke, Monday morning opening. The $12 gap and why it's not a time to chase in, but the general significance of uh, this gap on oil. Yes, of course, you will say it's been driven by geopolitical events. Um, well, we told you it was going to single digits when it was in the mid 60s. We also told you to go back above triple digits and set above 250. You saw in the Brent contract, $138 traded. We'll show you where that is relative to previous highs. And I will also be showing you that uh, on the WTI. But let's just show you this double WTI gap. Essentially, the close is there at 114.92. The open is there, 126.29, knocking on the door of $12 gap, a $12 gap, man. That is big. We thought this was a decent sized gap over here at 91 up until the open there at about 98. That was about $7. You have seen two upside gaps. This is more of a breakaway gap because you reasserted to the upside. You were going kind of flat a little bit here. Not so flat, but you'd convexed out. Then you got a whole new wind. This broadening structure says it is not a time to buy. It is not a time to buy. In fact, let's show you two charts. Um, just as on that point a little bit more, um, this is it's the same chart on a daily. This is the reason why I would say it's not a time to buy now if you weren't already in. But you have that as a bit of a shooting star. Now, bear in mind, this is not a full day. We've only just started the day. In fact, it's only Sunday night here where I am going from midnight. And uh, it's this is Eastern trade. But this is such a big gap from the previous close uh, to the point of open there. $12. It is huge um, on the WTI contract. But that is a bit of a shooting star and you've got potentially a blow off gap. It's a final exhaustion gap potentially. And those are the names of gaps. This is what you can learn with us amongst other things. And typically you could have this closed and then have quite a deeper pullback and a bit of a rest. There will possibly be some degree of rest. Let's also bear in mind this mega overperformance in oil was also joined by reasonable overperformance on gold and silver, all on a strong dollar. All on a strong dollar. Let's talk about the dollar and the euro USD. You heard it here first. The euro is going to be in huge trouble. The euro is going to turn down. We spoke about the euro USD and the euro Swiss franc. You've been hearing about it for five or six months. We updated you again uh, recently on this. So I won't dwell on this one too much longer, but I do want to show you this. In fact, let's finish on oil. Let's finish on oil while we're on oil, just so that you can see why that is a bit of a blow off. And also why we say you're on a bit of a broadening structure. Let's just show you that huge falling wedge. Remember the falling wedge. We said to you this would be a big big sell-off and that after you've done this you would work your way back up and you would be heading for all time highs and a run of $250 in oil as part of a macro inflationary event because we've cancelled all the evil ones you know the evil commodities the carbon commodities all bad guess what you still need them battery ain't doing it just yet uh, and it's going to take 10 to 15 years now you've got elongated muskiness him of the battery car saying we still need nuclear energy we still need the other energies we can't do this we can't have this runaway oil prices what is this going to do just think what is this going to do in inflation this is a huge inflation kicker the Fed is going to face big problems and you know it's going to face bigger problems still. The ECB, this Russian story and all these sanctions and all these deplatforming is hurting European banks, is hurting the euro and it's going to be a classic own goal. The euro is in major decline. So let's pivot from that beautiful chart with that major move up. Look at that one go. Single digits and you're back to triple digits. In a flick of a switch, most of us, bear in mind this is monthly, it's not actually that many, uh, you're in a year, less than a year and a half and you're back there. And by the way, it's worse for Brent. 
which is of course a slightly more valuable oil, a little bit more refined. You can have a look at it here. The song remains the same. The song remains the same. Look at that move. That high, by the way, pointing to it right there, $138. The last previous high of the this came prior to the great depression of the property boom that was 2007 2008 and it was a depression one day they'll own up to that fact they never own up to it now because it's psychologically damning they don't want you to know it acknowledge it that all-time high prior to the spiller the absolute thriller that was the end of that boom based on cash points as your home as cash point and buying a new car every 18 months because your home just went up and you added it to the mortgage um, yep those giddy days $147.50 $147.50 high that was 138 so let's just clarify that for you in the biggest orchestrated boom where the Rockefeller tax was allowed to run to all-time highs because and nobody cared because all our properties were going up 20% a year 12% a year and it was on big amounts and we were just living the life of Riley going on holiday and all of that driving that lovely moonbeam silver Bentley GT oh I love those days cruising around like the governor with my double glazed windows not a sound outside no plebs on the freeway could hear me herring at crazy hours at 140 miles an hour all the way up from Plymouth those were great days plume of water in the chucking down rain in my four-wheel drive fastest truck in the world I remember going past a lorry at about 135 miles an hour what a silly fool I was yep and there was this plume like a speedboat behind me uh, it was chucking down with rain as it always does in Britain and it was late at night no one on the roads uh, and that uh, lorry driver must have got the shock of his life those were the giddy days of driving fancy stuff and being young, carefree and stupid. Uh, and we all did it. Um, and here we go. Um, there it was. It was 147.5. And that, my friends, was 138. So I'm telling you, you were less than $9. You were less than $9 from that high. Think about that for a moment. That huge event that was brought oil right back down. End of the first impulse of a three impulse rising wedge. You can learn about this and more via the market sniper. Go book a call. That big move that gave you the two impulses with your final third here that led to the breakout that saw us say you want to be long energies how many times have you heard us on this channel saying you want to be long energies you want to be long energies which also includes by the way uranium um, the other oils um, as well and of course agris we're bullish agris but the energy's particular drivers because they were super oversold and everything got wound back and what uh, the harder the dump to the downside and the more ridiculous the number at the lows the bigger the pump and the bigger the shortage and America is no longer independent because Bidenomics says no <laughs> buy it from the Russians now they too evil now you got to buy it from the Iranians oh dear oh dear oh me what a lumbering bunch of clowns anyway nonetheless that two million barrels a day that is now needed uh, in America tips the supply and demand equation back again just like when it took it off you see markets are not inherently stable they were balanced at that point when America was um, requiring two million a day suddenly they became fracking independent what about green you ask good question I say not very green indeed especially for the doo-doo spinsies tap and gets stinky gas and lights it up and his entire kitchen goes up in a ball of flames um, but nonetheless it did mean that you didn't have to throw money at those nasty Venezuelans those nasty Iranians and those nasty Russians guess what happened they needed to make the same amount of money so they started pumping more and more oil more and more oil because they needed to make the same it created a glut you got a super spiller an absolute thriller on this channel you were told about it in the mid 60s it ended up single digits futures market went zero to negative and we have subsequently said you will go back to triple for an all-time high pump that will take you through $250 in time and you will hit triple digits again and you have hit triple digits at that point over there and you have actually come within $10 of the all-time foundational high 
Um, so this is the story. Oil is a massive story, but there's more to this narrative than just oil, because oil is being pumped because of the war and the fracturing. No longer Maersk is going to do shipping to Russia. Well, you should think twice before one of the biggest oil and gas producers, you decide to start breaking ties and calling them ugly things, because guess what? It gets kind of expensive for you to live. Um, and now we will buy from the Iranians that the Israelis want you to bomb all the time because cause, cause they're going to do something nuclear. So the story goes. So we told. So we told by the Zionists. Anyway, let's get on to the dollar. The dollar has been uh, strong. And more importantly, the euro. What's good for the dollar is harsh on the euro. And we've highlighted this uh, dynamic for you quite extensively. And this is what you will see. 98.9. Let's switch the light off there um, and take some of the scribbles off. Um, 98.9. See that little wee opening? That's for the month of March. We've barely started March. That's your candle for March. Actually, I think you're running into a zone where you're going to return. So it's been too strong. It's been too good. It's going to have a pullback potentially. It's going to have a pullback potentially, but it is possibly even in a breakout. We have done our draws for our community and suggested what may or may not be happening in terms of the dollar index and also the other alternatives that are tradable from the euro usd the usd dkk and all the potential setups and the targets that are generated if you want to know more about that go to themarketsniper.com and you can find out where our stops are where our, tar our take profits are and what kind of r's we really trade yep indeed so let's have a look at that euro usd that is a beautiful little puke my friends a beautiful little puke of a failing currency with failing management and stuffy old bureaucrats doing a marvelous job of destroying the continent of Western Europe. That is right. They will leave the West in tatters. Europe will go first, but I'm afraid America, your day will come to they are moving east, said Kissinger. We move east. We move the power to the east. That's where all the Bolshevik communists have already been established. Um, and that is where the power will move. Um, but you can see this failure right here, right down to 108. You again got this trade. You got this trade at 118. You got the short call there. You should have been short at that point. You're rid of risk to the top of the wicks. Down, down, down she goes. What a spiller. What an absolute thriller. And of course, you've actually got a bit of extra profit you could go into there for the bit that you didn't close. So your aggregate risk reward is probably in and around 15 um, which is not half bad uh, for most people, but it's actually pretty average for us. Um, we are excited by the Euro Swiss franc, where we have 100. Yep, we want 100 plus out of the Euro Swiss franc, and we're calling for a run to the 0.7s. And it ran parity tonight. That's right, Sunday night, aka Monday morning in the Far East. You actually ran parity, and I can almost guarantee you that the Swiss National Bank is buying lots and lots of Euro puke pies, which they will later cotch up with great gusto, and you'll have another man throwing, off, uh, throwing up over the side of the roof uh, in the same way as he peed off this particular roof. That is called a broadening structure with an ascending, with an ascending tilt. And we model for that. We're the only people that have written theory for this. How do you, what does broadening structures tell you? What do you need? What's the trend going into them? What is their inherent tilt? A splitter. All of these concepts are devised and written up and taught in greater detail in our primary content. And we continue to show people how we use them on an ongoing basis. This was a continuation call. The break of this line was a key movement to the downside. And you had a gap down to that level, which was inherently telling you you are likely to run what is known as a basing descending grind line, which has broken. And that is also a phrase you will only hear here because that's how uh, it's named by us as no one else has ever thought to describe uh, these concepts properly in terms of megaphones. Um, so that is an absolute spiller. And it has run the parity mark. And it's going to be mainstream media. You're going to have to search for it and then you might just see it because they don't want to advertise the great failings, the great failings. Oh, my poor dear God. USD DKK. Yep. Let's take the eye off on that. Um, and you can see that structure as well. We can go weekly and you can see exactly what's happening. This is the Danish krona, which is in fact pegged to the euro and is equally indebted and garbage as a currency. Um, even though it's Northern European, it's just as bad as what would have been the French franc. 
um, and many of the others. And that is a key call that we have made. We have continued to assert that the dollar will be dominant. I've seen other guys talking about how the dollar index is about to crash and smash right the hell down because of rate of change indicators and other things. I'm afraid no. Uh, I don't agree. I don't concur. Could we be wrong? We always could be wrong. Could they be right? They absolutely could be right. But this is essentially your dollar index chart and we can show you how similar it looks by popping over on the same time frame to the dollar index itself. Um, so we expect continuation to the upside and as we've said Brent Johnson in theory and in principle was accurate with his dollar milkshake theory he just didn't have the technical analysis to get the timing right we've had that and we always felt the dollar was going up and we heard and we found him and his theories made sense um, he just was too early uh, and now he's coming into season let's have a look at that Dixie very very similar to that usd dkk remember dkk is essentially the euro pegged to the euro lots of pegs to fail my friends as part and parcel of this great fx bonfire that has to be destroyed for the new system problem reaction solution we have a solution after you've sweated and rioted and gone hungry for a while we'll present it but it's already pre-baked and slotted in the oven and waiting for that moment when we pull the shit pile all down on your head. We will pull the lever and then you will all panic and you will all uh, freak out uh, and then you will beg us for a solution and then we as your masters and overlords will provide out of the goodness out of our soul the new system whereby we will continue to urgently extract from you, keep you in poverty, continue to manage you, live off you in a parasitic sense uh, and you will now submit to full surveillance finance in all the meanings of the word. But without getting into too many further political analogies um, let's shimmy on back to the markets and talk about a little bit of gold so who else did well on this and who else has been unimpressive because unfortunately there's been a student in class that should be doing a whole bunch better that isn't yep you know who I'm talking about mr. Bitcoin at the back you fix everything apparently according to my Twitter feed Bitcoin fixes this. I'm waiting for you to get fixed, boy. You're as heavy as a lard ass after a pie eating contest, my friend. Um, anyway, gold had a nice little pop open. It's not quite the oil market. And again, remember, this has been kind of explosive. We did talk about the gold market and where we think the targets would be. We did that with Patrick Vieira, not the footballer, the SD bullion guy. That's right. Um, and we spoke to him and we said 2057 and boy, did you get a nice little move on towards that. Um, maybe I should actually shut these signaling things while I'm recording a video. How about that? Sorry for that. Uh, ka -ching, ka -ching, ka Francis, Francis. Yep. Tell it to your auntie, buddy. I'm busy. Uh, anyway, so with that uh, cheerful comment, 2057. Yep. Um, that's going to be the number uh, in our opinion as to where you probably get a bit of resistance and you might have a little bit of a pullback. Um, we, we're a little bit isolated, yeah, a bit of a gap. Mm, it's not so super strong trading, but you are very, very close. You did actually run the 2000s. Now, it, let's just point this out. In terms of weeks above 2000, this is the number of times you have spent weeks above the 2000. You see that? One to and a teensy weensy bit has to be counted over there three which is probably a single day and we're in the fourth week ever in gold's history above 2000 and it has squirted out look at that big boy show me you love me tiger yes indeed like a weasel coming out of a gutter that thing has spat out uh, and he's heading up, 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 but not quite to the moon. 2057 will do, uh, and then we'll take it from there. Nice secondary relative high. I spoke also about a scenario where we could get something like this. Making that secondary high come about, come down, come down, and squeezy, squeezy. Japanesey like a Toyota, like Satoshi Nakamoto, who never was. We can pop. Uh, to the moon. Um, so yeah, we're in good spirits today. Uh, we love it. We love it. We smell the reset napalm. 
snort it up, boys. They're going to ram it down your throat. If you don't, you may as well see it coming. You may as well make dollars out of it. Uh, what about the silver? Didn't do too bad. Back above. $26 bad. A little bit soft. I think this could be localized highs for a couple of things. Like I said, on the oil, as minute, if you all go charging in and you all go steaming right in and say, yeah, I'm buying gold and silver right now, leverage long, 100x, you're going to lose your money. Um, long run, you should accumulate. Remember the pure gold interview? Um, have a check on that. It's a couple of videos back on this channel. Um, see the CEO. Decent people, they will send you your medal. They will get it to you. It will be insured while it's being delivered until you sign for your package. You will have kilos, ounces, whatever you choose to buy of silver, gold, platinum. And I think they even have, they may have even had a little bit of palladium, you'll have to ask. And you can phone them and talk to them. You don't have to pay, buy, pay or buy anything. They're real human beings. So give it a go. The links are below. Uh, pure gold for physical. You can also go to Bullion Vault and have internet gold and silver for now. And you can even reserve bars with numbers if you prefer to do that for now, which you can then sell back. And un, uh, you can unnumber them, which costs a little bit extra if you number them and you have a specific named vault and numbered bar put to your name. Um, in the meantime, if you haven't settled down, because you don't want to have to be moving around, and, uh, you know, gold and silver is kind of a problem when you're jumping on planes, you know, unless it's a minuscule little ounce or two, um, you tend to have issues. So you can't move kilos of silver uh, across uh, territory. And most of you should be moving. That's the absolute truth of the fact. You are not well treated in the place of your birth. You are taxed to the hilt. You are punished because you are one of the local tribe and you have inertia and everyone has inertia. The minute you move, you become a tourist and you can go where you are treated best. Um, and we do a lot of that as well. We talk about it a lot. You can find out more by becoming a member. Anyway, enough of that. That was gold and silver looking pretty perky, but this is not runaway train it's not quite the oil wick but it is an improvement getting back above 26 is kind of nice it's been a bit of a thin period above 26 as well we can highlight that on the silver uh, there she blows there she blows kind of an iceberg there of a number of weeks we had a num three weeks there five or six there a little tip tap toe there and there and then another iceberg there it's been pretty thin pickings for $26 since the great moon that took you up to the 49 level. Um, wouldn't you love seeing that thing going into hundreds, 200s and 250 and being stuffed with pure gold bars, kilos of silver, ounces of gold, maybe kilos of gold and half tons, full tons of silver. Yep, you can do it. Just start stacking. It starts with the first ounce and it's a great thing to hold. It feels like real money to me every time I pick it up. Uh, and as I've always said, it's not about the fastest horse being Bitcoin. As uh, some have said, it is about a stable of horses and precious metals absolutely play a role. Gold and silver are up at the moment whilst our friend, our digital gold and love token is actually looking a little ill and he's been playing games with me i have to say i have to say i have to say he's i've been leaving him leaving him being generally bear orientated towards him and then for the first time he put in something a little bit impulsive and i thought you know what maybe the selling exhaustion is over you got an impulsive move right there let's not do such a big dot how about that francis yeah how about that be kind of smart um, so that was the two candles that said, look, the only way this doesn't end up more downside is we go really strongly up to this level. What did it do? It went really strongly up to this level. So I said, you know what? I have to listen to that and respect that effort. You have a possible, and I drew it in blue, but this time I'm on TG pink spirit. You have a possible W bottom. It could be a possible inflection point, he said. He did not pivot rampant bull. He said it could be a possible inflection point. What that means is if you have a small rest and you come back to that level and you then trigger to the upside that that is a potential break of a reversal. Did it do that? No. In actual fact, what it's gone and done is just as we started to contemplate the possibility of an upside inflection point, it took it all back and came running right back. 
So we go, it's still a possible infection point, but the possibility has gone right, right down. It's about this big, if you can see it, uh, and it ain't looking good. So it's back at looking a little sick. And what I've been doing is I invert these charts, by the way. So we can um, have a look at it inverted and you can make your own mind up. That sell off is the only way you negated something that was starting to look a little bit bullish. How do you spoil it? You come back down as hard as you went up and that's exactly what it did. So not only did it uh, pretend to be strong and do the one thing that what could be bullish in a in a sea of bearish impressions because the trend my friends are down on crypto the trends are down that is a basing ascending grind line the only way it fixes it was the w bottom and it pretended that it was doing it and then the minute we made a uh, youtube and said look there's a possibility it took it straight back and thereby reduced that possibility and that is trading because what's actually happened is it's got more volatile as it's worn on and that's not a bullish thing that was up and down this was thin thin base super fast up and super fast down that that points to increased volatility it wasn't to be expected and it's taken back that possibility to a large degree although it still exists a little bit we'll see what happens on monday morning um, on the american session if it comes back super fast again up to this level and then winds up it could still go. It just doesn't look that likely when it keeps hanging out bound down here. So Bitcoin is looking still ill. It's looking still ill and its volatility has increased, which is normally bearish. You don't go up on HVF uh, structures on increasing volatility. You go up on decreasing volatility and compression. And that's what's happened. So um, after pretending and faking us into potentially considering a possible, and I keep saying that's right, possible inflection point. That was the video, by the way, in case you had any doubts. Possible inflection point may loom. Um, it's now gone and done exactly the opposite and took it straight back so that's what markets do and that's what you get if you take the total market cap which is largely bitcoin but has a lot of the alts in it as well and you invert the chart so now it looks potentially like a continuation to the upside and given that this is market cap going down that is a crash to the downside we're looking at the chart upside down total is not bitcoin but it is a large part of bitcoin let's do bitcoin itself I know this is the uh, traditional markets, but crypto guys um, often get things wrong. They think uh, market views are binary things. You go from bull to bear. Sometimes you say, hey, we're being offered a possible event here that may or may not occur, but could see a turning. In the end, it isn't looking like it's going to occur. See, Bitcoin hasn't changed very much from the total. Very, very similar. Uh, very, very similar. So we'll no doubt get uh, the kiddies going puke mad on crypto again because it went up and down super fast and we said possibility that it's looking at a reversal and now we need to almost take it back. Um, that, that, that possibility greatly reduced. But that's trading and that's the markets. The volatility has increased. This does not look particularly good. This is an environment where Bitcoin fixes this apparently. There's war. People are being um, disenfranchised to do financial business because of that war. Bitcoin is supposed to fix that. Bitcoin is dead. Gold and silver is up. Um, that upsets a lot of people if you tell them that. It upsets them. Ah, you know me. I'm always upsetting somebody. Uh, but anyway, so that was a little divergence into the crypto sphere for the crypto folks. That is what's going on. An increase in the volatility. Uh, feigning strength in one way and then giving it up very quickly in another. So what do you think this is going to do to equity markets? Risk on, risk off. What about the NASDAQ? What about the SPY? That is the Standard & Poor's uh, ETF. Let's have a little look and see how the futures might be behaving. We can also take in the debt markets. Whoops, we don't want to be on the inverted. Let's have a look on the other markets. Got to go back down. We want to have a look at the debt markets. This is a debt crisis as well as a financial um, crisis.
crisis and a commodity inflationary crisis. So it's got everything in it. You know, everything is broken about this uh, situation. We've said that that should be a head and shoulders on balance of probabilities for a downside move. And you are barely hanging just above with a minor bounce at this point. That's on the Treasury bond. That's its value. That we call was a slap in the face event. Um, TNX, that's the actual valuation. Um, that's the actual yield, my apologies. That's having a little bit of a rest back on the yield. We'll wait and see how that trades. It's not live yet. I think it might, risk might come back into that and it might bounce up. So let's have a look at the SPY. Let's see if it's trading. Is it live? 432.17. I'm not sure it is. This still has the potential of head and shoulder structure in it. People don't like it when I point out that. Um, by the way, head and shoulders on indices is almost a serial disease uh, where you normally lose. Um, but every now and then one does come off. Why? Because indices spend 90% of their time grinding up slowly uh, but surely. Let's have a look at uh, NASDAQ. This is where NASDAQ, I think it's only end of day on Friday how it's been. This has been a bleed out. NASDAQ has been very, very heavy. Not a head and shoulders. Uh, we can wipe it. But it is a, a, a sloppy melt. Trying to base out here with these hammers and then looking sick again. Not much ability to follow through. So it's going to be driven very much by what's going in the currency markets and the debt markets. These are your biggest markets and they will dictate to equity markets. We still expect 2.17. You see this one does have a live market and today's trade. So it has opened lower. But because of fear, fear, everybody rushes into the dollar. What do they buy? They buy debt. Dumbest thing you can possibly do. But for short term protection, um, providing resets, not about to happen the second you're just afraid and you want to park your money and you're taking it out of everything else and you're too scared to buy gold, too scared to buy silver, too scared to speculate on the price of oil, especially now after that gap, I wouldn't do that. Um, so you park it up in safety. You don't want to put it in an overpriced equity market. Um, so that's what's happening. Is there a live feed on the Dow? Is it trading? Yes, that looks like the day 7th of March. It is down. Dow also has, like the SPY, head and shoulder. That means uh, that's a target and you can go beyond that. Head and shoulders have inbuilt overperformance in them potential. So uh, a partial close is recommended there. You might make more in the event of it continuing to the downside. So we'll see. We'll see exactly what's happening. We did trade 99 on the Dixie here. What was the high? Uh, that's the weekly time frame. And we have a look at that. That is 99.2. A little bit of easing back. We've made a number of targets. This one, there is one more at 99.79, which I still think may fall. Will it fall as part of this move or do we first pull back for an extended period and come back and get that one a whole bunch later? I don't know. Um, maybe a rest is due. Um, so that's a little bit from us. I'm going to finish with the Euro USD getting a little bit of a bid in the morning Asian markets, uh, going into the midday Asian markets later to be the morning European markets. Are they going to source it up? Don't forget this target has just been run. So the possibility of a bit of a rally in the Euro is definitely on. They do not like disorderly markets. They do not like major breakouts and things that go wrong. But the ECB is in huge trouble. They have carbon credits. They make it expensive for you to buy the sins of gas and oil. Plus, they have huge taxes, much higher taxes. UK is about 80% tax on gas. Can you believe that, you Americans? You think you're paying a lot of tax. Um, so those countries are paying even more in it. Uh, they need heating in the winter. Uh, we're still in winter months and uh, cost is in the food. It's cost is in everything. Man, oh man. Plus grains and wheats. I highlighted that actually in our previous uh, Reset Sniper video. You can go and watch that. We are not going to buy grains and wheats and, uh, from Russia and Ukraine is probably going to have a reduction of around 25% in their supply on uh, wheat and various grains as well as a major grower that's going to have an effect of five or six percent on global production five or six percent you think that's not much it's huge those small balances are what push markets into instability that is the price of wheat good people that is a weekly chart by the way so in case you thought that's little pippy stories this is a run from 755 to 114. That particular commodity, this remain, uh, represents huge volatility and increase in prices being paid for the wheat.
future. That is a problem. It is a problem for inflation. You have oil doing that, you have wheat doing that, and they'll tell you, but it's because of the war, but it's because of supply chain. It never had to do with the entire commodity super cycle all being geared up by a failing currency system due to printing, 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 quantitative easing, quantitative easing. They'll never admit that it was a central banking cartel that's introduced all the volatility into the system so that they make money on the pump and leave you with the dump. They ride the escalator up and they hand you the ticket for the elevator down. That is what they do while devaluing your money. Inflation is a tax on you. Hear me again. This is the greatest tax on you. That is the cost of your loaf of bread going up right there, right damn well there. That oil barrel going up is the cost of everything you have delivered from your Amazon package, from the actual packaging itself, the plastics, fantastics, uh, and all the other poisonous things they wrap your goods in. That is the oil goes into that. Oil is in everything. It's the Rockefeller tax by pumping it to the moon. They make greater wealth. They own most of these X standard oil uh, fragmented, supposedly monopoly broken up concerns. That was Mobile, Exxon, Chevron and everything. They were all the fragmented parts of a major monopoly. Competition is sin, said the Rockefellers under the guidance of the Rothschild family. They do not uh, practice capitalism, they practice communism and monopolism and that's why you are here why, where you are and that is why your pay packet is going less far despite your wife also working, getting increases, working harder, longer hours, pushing it, being effective, being paid greater wages and feeling poorer and finding the grocery bill goes up more, the rent goes up more and in Europe you're going to have peak inflation and they will lie to you about the true percent in every single way through government statistics shrinkflation, smaller packages, but similar assumed amounts in the basket. They will continue to misrepresent how much they are taxing you, making your life poorer. And as your income goes up, but lower than the rate of your cost of living, you will go into higher tax bands. So you will be hit on the top by increasing tax creep due to the inflation practices, which actually is a tax increase, not only in your cost of living, but also in the fact that you will pay higher taxes by, by, by virtue of climbing up in income and going into higher marginal tax brackets. You get hit from the top, you get hit from the bottom. And of course, the VAT and all the consumer expenses, even on staples you are forced to pay, is on now a bigger number because of inflation, etc. So you will continue to face 20% on a bigger number if you're in a 20 percent VAT zone, etc, etc. It's time you leave to go where you treat it best. And despite the dollar showing strength, there is still inflation in America. You only have to look at the price of gold. You only have to look at the price of silver, how gold and silver has performed relative to the dollar over the last hundred years. And you can see it's gone from $20 to 2000 Okay, so that is 100x over 100 years. That's how much you've lost. You've lost 99%. You're left with 1%. That is literally the story. And therefore, you should protect and treat gold like virtual liquid cash because it'll hold you up better. And it's gone up with the dollar going up. It's important to note these gaps that occurred on oil have occurred on a strengthening dollar. This is what's happened on a strengthening dollar. Go and have a look at the euro price of wheat over here. Go and have a look at the euro price of gold over here. In fact, we have a couple of charts for you on that. Why not spoil you while we add it? It's having such fun today. Look at that for a move. That has already surpassed the previous high because the euro is in a state of collapse as called on YouTube more than six months ago, handled inside our community probably nine months to a year ago. This is what's been going down. This currency is losing ground of one of the big ones. By the way, other great trades that we've given you. You saw the USD ruble. You saw what happened with that before and after pick that we handled. I think it might have been non-farm. We showed you the setup before in September of the ruble. We showed it to you afterwards. This is how that currency looks. That is the one you missed. You also probably missed the, the try uh, when that happened. That was before the ruble. And I'm going to tell you the next one you're possibly going to miss unless you're really careful. And it's a difficult one to trade. There aren't too many place, places to trade it, but it's the Korean one. That's uh, the smaller view uh, take 
of the current setup that we've been trading and that's your dollar strength um, that we're trading it with and is that mean we're a big fan of bankers i often get this oh you like the dollar you're a fan of the bankers it's like jesus mate who the hell are you we are gold and silvers and sound money and no fiat currency represents sound money at all none of them there are just some that are less bad there's some that will fail first and that is what we're trading because to trade one currency against another is called fx trading and it's easy to do truth be told we want to hold gold versus euros we want to hold silver versus euros against we we've traded community members have made money on gold against the try on a, diff, a platform that offers that particular exchange that's exactly what you want the failing currency and gold or even bitcoin when it is ready which it isn't and that's what we were also pointing out so gold and silver are it these are the things that are working for you currently the korean one um, nice little target made but i'm staying long because i'm staying for the big one we're going to stay in for the big one to see if it comes it might pull back uh, and go long way around uh, I do think the dollar may have a little bit of a rest, but if it triggers this one, we're seeing a big spike coming here. This is going to lead to the failure of the Hong Kong dollar, the Taiwan dollar, and this could lead to larger Eastern. So this Russian war narrative that's killed the ruble um, because it's gone through the moon. By the way, it went even higher recently. There's your ruble. Anyone like a good trade? Uh, how do you like that? A little bit of an erectile projectile in the morning. That's a proper testosterone morning. I tell you what, my friends, um, that is beauty and the beast. And boy, did she get it. Um, that is super strong. Um, that is super, super strong with overperformance rules. We've got guys that are still holding this position from this original structure. That is your ruble and your ruble is at 138 and a half going for 140. And if you think this isn't going to happen, we're seeing every one of the FX emergings. Countless times on this channel, we have said trade the dollar against the FX emergings. They will fall from the boundaries first from the walls. Some of the currencies are even outside the walls. They're sacrificial. When the barbarian horde comes, they will be killed first. And that's how we'll know the barbarians have arrived. The Turkish lira is outside the walls. The ruble was outside the walls. Look at that move. You saw this thing trigger in January of 22. You had a feign and break in December of 21. January of 22, and you hadn't even heard a thing about Russia invading Ukraine at that point. This is the news before the news. This is HVF method. Why have you not already booked a call? It's not suitable for everybody, but you could at least find out if it might be suitable for you and what the conditions would be for you to join and enjoy your time with us. Trading, financial reset, building wealth, protecting wealth in crazy times, including ensuring we do not miss the uh, Korean one, we do not miss this triggering event, and we do not miss another 50-60% move. Crypto is the new, uh, FX is the new crypto right now, um, and it's the sexiest trades, and macro is overruling anything that happens in crypto now that it's a trillion market cap, because institutions are now involved, and crypto kiddies don't realize that. So for now, we're going to have to sit and wait and see what happens Bitcoin on Monday during the course of the day. Does it break up? Does it break down? I'm not feeling so groovy about it at the moment. Um, it's done a little bit of volatility, a little bit gets you excited that it might be bottoming only to take it all straight back and not set up what we expected it to set up after just playing a game. And that's not going to turn out great. And a lot of guys are going to huddle their way through a potential deflationary environment that could see wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, major flush out in the space don't forget people are buying nfts for 16.9 ethereum which essentially is 2600 times by 17 um, and an nft is something electronic that you hold a serial number to to say that you are the original owner of that but anyone else can take a picture of and put in their twitter avatar you can determine the value of that this is part of the metaverse and all they're planning they're going to make this crazy ass world of owning nothing but just digitized garbage in the internet space it's the second coming of tamagotchi and pet rocks uh, and guess what if you can sell those things for 17 ethereum at three grand uh, ethereum or 2600 ethereum that's the best business to be in if you want to buy that stuff 
I've also got a bridge to sell you uh, somewhere around San Francisco painted red. I own it and you can have it, uh, but it's going to cost you. Uh, so there you go. That's it. Uh, Hong Kong dollar. Lots of peg fails. This is what we've been predicting for a long time. This has been a real acceleration of this agenda. Um, and you've seen a real spike of mentals out of the Korean one pushing into high territory. It hasn't touched now for quite some time. And if you think you're going to win with all these trades on your own, good luck. Um, there's more, there's more, there's more and managing it and ensuring you are there and not missing key moments. Plus all the other setups that come. We are also long certain equities. Some of them are silver equities. Some of them are others. Some of them are in key structures. Um, we've seen defense stocks spike. Isn't it funny? It's all little Ukrainian mother with baby at breast. We need a no-fly zone. That's a very interesting concept of a mother to introduce a highly complex military idea. She said she needs a no-fly zone. It's almost as if someone prompted her. I just can't help but think, you know, isn't that funny? And Zelensky, this dancer turned actor. It's a funny old world, guys. It's a funny old world. Be careful what you believe. Be careful what you see. Nobody wants anyone to be killed in any war. Not a Ukrainian, not a Russian. I don't like death. I don't like bodies. Who wants this? Well, what's the output they will get oh nato's been too weak and we want a no-fly zone okay provoke putin some more and start spending more money giving more money to lockheed martin giving more money to bae systems giving more money to rayathon well you might buy take work take a look at uh, defense stocks we did you can hold your nose and buy those suckers um, but it's quite clear they're campaigning for more money more slush funds for dark state to do dirty deeds dirty deeds done not so dirt cheap that's the game, unfortunately, uh, and that's what these guys get on with, and you should be aware of that, uh, and you should be, find them resentful. No more military spending, no more wars, no more provoking Putin, um, no more attacks on citizens from either side. Leave him alone, uh, and let's get on with a peaceful environment. But that's got more chance of happening than me falling pregnant via pollination. But anyway, that's the end of your Sunday evening session. Thank you, thank you, thank you for checking in. We appreciate your likes and shares. We'll catch you next time. We've been giving you the reset trades in reset season. Catch you next time.